Snowy mountains, green alpine meadows, high mountain pastures, accumulations of stones. These are all very different landscapes, but sharing the same invisible aspect, permafrost. Even in the Alps, as in the Arctic plains of Siberia and the tundra of Alaska and Canada, there's permafrost. Permafrost is a thermal state of lithologic materials, consisting of soil or rock which remains at a temperature below zero degrees Celsius for at least two consecutive years without ever thawing even during the summer. Hence the word permafrost, or permanent plus frost, permanently frozen. This frost layer may be covered by another one called active layer, which seasonally thaws in summer. Due to the low temperatures, the water next to the permafrost is generally in the solid state of ice. Together with the glaciers, permafrost is recognized as one of the most sensitive element to climate change. Glaciers are a very good indicator for the climate due to their high sensitivity to temperature and precipitation changes, with resulting morphological changes that all of us, whether or not scientists, can observe. Permafrost is an equally valid indicator of climate change, even though the effect is slow to take effect. The current rise in temperature leads to melting and disappearing of permafrost, but its invisibility ensures that this variation is not perceived by sight. On the other hand, the consequences of the evolution and degradation in permafrost can clearly be seen. Rock falls, debris flows, problems to high altitudes buildings. For instance, there were many cases of rock falls in the Alps. In several cases, they have revealed ice, hidden within the fissures for decades, proving the permafrost state in the rock. If the outside temperature rises because of climate change and, as a consequence, the permafrost within the walls starts to melt, an increase in the intensity and frequency of such occurrences can be expected. It's always the increase in temperature that affects the dynamics of rock glaciers. Rock glaciers are deposits of large angular rocks. These accumulations of rock debris are similar to glaciers in shape. They are well defined and have steep sides and front. They often acquire an elongated shape with a forward tongue that can even exceed a kilometer in length. These forms, typical of mountain environments, indirectly reveal the possible presence of permafrost. The presence of ice inside makes them move slowly towards the valley at speeds generally not exceeding one meter per year. Their surface is full of flow structures, such as wrinkles and furrows. If the state of permafrost disappears and the ice melts, the rock glaciers accelerate, their body undergoes changes, cracks open and some parts may collapse. The material now released, consisting of water and debris, can plummet to the valley floor. It's the temperature that determines whether there is permafrost in the substratum. Long-term thermal monitoring is essential for studying how permafrost evolves and how it responds to outside climate changes. This is why a permafrost monitoring and studying network has been created as part of the Permanet project, consisting of 47 measurement sites located in five countries in the Alps. It includes both existing stations and new ones that this project made possible to be installed. Several drilling rigs were created in the Alps for making holes into which devices have been placed, measuring the temperature in the subsurface. Generally, the holes are made with a technique called core destruction. A hammer at the bottom of the hole breaks the material and advances into the deep. Sometimes it's possible to realize that a layer containing ice has been breached because along with bits of rock, pieces of ice emerge from the hole. Very rarely, the holes are made with a technique called full core sampling, which provides intact core samples. However, this technique is more expensive 
and is not always viable. From the core samples, it's possible to reconstruct the stratigraphy of the subsoil more clearly, i.e. recognize how rock, detritus and ice alternate. Lowering a camera into the hole can help to distinguish the different layers of the subsoil. Once the drilling has been done, the hole is sealed and a thermometer chain is placed inside, which consists of wires with sensors positioned at different depths that measure the temperature at different points. The measuring sites are also equipped with weather stations that detect and record meteorological parameters such as air temperature, humidity, precipitation, wind and solar radiation in order to compare these data to temperatures measured in the hole and thus study how these influence the permafrost. Periodically the data measured by the sensors and recorded in the data logger are downloaded using portable equipment. In vertical or almost vertical cliffs, mostly the temperature of the top layer of rock, the active layer, is monitored. Using battery-operated parts with drills up to half a metre in length, holes are made with a diameter sufficient to accommodate the chain thermometer, on which temperature sensors are fitted to a depth of about 50 centimetres within the rock. Apart from the knowledge needed to use the equipment and interpret the data, the technicians are also required to have rock climbing skills. Increasingly for collecting the data, remote transmission devices are used, such as GPRS, to cut out some of the manual operations in these arduous sites. It's not possible to obtain temperature measurements everywhere, but it's important to know where permafrost can be guaranteed. The partners of the permanent project have therefore created a database of permafrost evidence. It includes temperature monitoring sites, direct evidence of the presence of permafrost, such as ice being revealed following excavations or rockfalls, and indirect indicators such as rock glaciers. The location of the rock glacier is made by examining autophotos. These are aerial views allowing to identify shapes which are hard to be recognised from the ground. The field operations on the rock glaciers consist of a periodical check of their movements by measuring the position of certain points on their surface with GPS antennas. By using a laser scanner, a 3D model of the surface of the accumulation of rock debris at a given time is reconstructed. Movements and deformations can therefore be calculated by comparing differences between successive 3D models. In the case of tomography, electrodes are inserted in the ground along the stretches, recording how the electrical current is transmitted into the ground by the various different types of material. Indirect geophysical surveys of this type are used to assess and to monitor the internal structure of the rock glacier in which detritus, rock debris mixed with ice and ice lenses alternate. Other investigations relate to the water originating from rock glaciers. Some studies currently underway are analysing whether the increase in heavy metals recorded in some sites can be correlated to permafrost degradation and to ice melting in certain rock glaciers. In the Alps, there's not just increasing scientific knowledge about permafrost and its temperature monitoring. Within the permanent project, many techniques to assess and to monitor slope instability have been tested i.e. for dangerous rockfalls which are directly related to the permafrost evolution. With terrestrial photogrammetric methods, rock collapses can be revealed. Taking a sequence of partially overlapping images with calibrated commercial digital cameras and using the principles of stereoscopy, it's possible to obtain a detailed digital model of the rock face. Comparing digital photos from different periods Rockfalls taking place within that period can be identified and measured without having to come into direct contact with the surface or having to climb the rock face. Similar results are obtained with laser scanners. The study of permafrost in the Alps is still in its infancy, but significant steps forward have been achieved through the Permanet project. Fourteen partners have joined to share data, knowledge and experience to create a monitoring network, a map of probable distribution of permafrost and assess procedures and techniques for the analysis of phenomena 
and risks related to its evolution. These are essential tools for a greater knowledge and a better management of high-altitude alpine areas.